Hi everyone, welcome to Babies with Knives. I'm your host, Alice Peng, aka Lala Twiddle. And below me is my ever-present co-host, Brandon Powers. Howdy, howdy. Brandon Powers is looking at the wrong monitor right now. But today Yes, I'm reading. Oh, well, what he is reading right now is the character creation rules for the Ruin RPG. We're going to be making characters today. And you will also find an actual play that I will link in the description below. But this is a post-apocalyptic world uh, created by Jay Gantry. And it is going to be running off the system of an adaptation of D&D 5th Edition. So if you play D&D 5th Edition, there's going to be a lot of aspects that are going to be very familiar to you, with a few minor tweaks here and there. Character creation will start showing you some of those changes. So Brandon, why don't we get started? Uh, we're going to be using the quick start that you can get off Drive-Thru RPG. It is free, and I will make sure to leave a link in the description below. What are you thinking of making, Brandon? Um, well, I'm thinking of rolling some stats and seeing uh, what what might pop to mind out of the game. Uh, in the quick start, we're uh, only given uh, three of the five classes, I believe, that they're planning on having. And uh, only I... one of the backgrounds, of which I think he said there were three. I believe he said that they were looking up at up to seven different um, characters, classes, not five. But oh, okay. Might... But it might be five. I remember seven. But yeah, we're going to be playing with one of three options today only. And here's the first deviation from D&D 5th Edition. For a character stat rolling, we're going to be rolling 2d6 plus 6. You can see that on the screen right there. We're doing step one. The reason that we're adding six uh, is because all the weak people have already been weeded out. Uh, since this is a post-apocalyptic survival type game uh, that uh, only the strong have survived. You're also able to take an array of 16, 14, 13, 12, 10, 9. Um, I definitely think that I'm going to be choosing to roll, though. Because 7, the average on 2d6, plus 6 comes out to 13, and you only get two stats that beat that, so. Yeah, uh, my first roll is an 11, um, with that 6 that they give us, and then I have a 14. I gotta say, with my bad luck in rolling D&D &D stats, giving me a free 6 helps a lot. <laughs> uh, I, just rolling 2d6, my dice don't know I'm rolling stats. It's really hilarious. Ooh, yeah, I'm rolling a lot better than I normally would, by all means. Um, that is 15. I have four of my stats done. 11, 14, 13, 15. And that's another 14. Ooh, and 12. So my last stat is a 12. So in the end, I have 11, 14, 13, 14, 15, 12. Raina, what about you? I got an 18, a 15, a double 14, a double 13. So I went average and higher. Okay. I went a bit uh, closer to the average, which doesn't surprise me when it comes to stat rolling. The universe likes to make me work with, uh, work with less and try and get more. Okay. So what do you think you're going to choose for your origin? Oh, uh, for stat Origin, we only get one choice, yes. and that's going to be settler. settler. Yep. So we are people that live in the settlement and have toughened ourselves. Um, because of uh, the harsh conditions, we're going to get a bonus to our health attribute, constitution, and Dungeons and Dragons terms. Uh, movement speed is 30. Um, we are going to be proficient with survival and with stealth. We've learned to scrounge, and we've learned that we need to hide. And we get English as well as trade talk, which I guess is a, uh, a more universal language uh, I think he was talking about. Yes. And on the screen now, you can see the settler's traits. So we're going to gain a plus one to our health attribute naturally, which means that for me, I think I'm going to put my 15 into health, which will get modded to a 16. That's useful, right? That sounds good. And let's see. Let's make this a little bigger so you guys can all see that. Wonderful. So I'm going to put that 15 into health. That puts it a 16. Again, this is like D&D 5th edition or many other, or re recent editions of D&D. So once you are at 12, you get your plus one. 
14, you get a plus 2. So 16 is going to leave me at a plus 3 modifier for that stat. That's beautiful. Okay, settler, move is, settler movement is going to be a natural 30 feet, a natural speed of 30. So let me put that down. And we are proficient in both uh, survival and stealth. What that means is I'm going to take that little, uh, a little marker, get a shape here, and I'm going to mark off survival and stealth. So those are going to be proficient for me, and I can fill those in with color in a little bit. But this way you guys can see. And then I'm going to put my proficiency in trade talk. At the moment, they do not yet have a form fillable character sheet. So you will notice what I am doing right now is simply utilizing paint and filling it in so you guys can see, follow along with me. Brandon, while I fill in the rest of my stats, do you want to talk a little bit about what is spinning in your mind for a character concept? Uh, sure. You know, I've got that 18 uh, sitting there. Uh, for our actual play, I, I worked on a character that I had made that was a, a mercenary, which is the, the fighter type. Uh, and he was kind of a, a stealthy um, get in close and uh, kill people with uh, short knives, basically easy to uh, hide weapons and such. And so I went with uh, very much, you know, a, a rogue fighter type. Um, with this, uh, you know, I'm, I was looking at Merc again. Uh, the, the classes that we've got are mechanics who they know about fixing things. Um, they are going to be able to use up to medium armor. And you pick uh, some one area of specialty. That can be uh, working on armors, working on weapons, vehicles, or improving the settlement. The settlement being rules that we don't have yet, but are going to be really important in the Ruin RPG as you try and build up your, your people during this uh, post-apocalyptic time. The Merc, like I was saying, is much more the fighter type out of the group. Um, he is uh, can use any type of armor, any type of weapons. Um, he's focused on strength um, as his saving throw. What does the mechanic get? Dex is his saving throw. Um, and then he picks a type of combat to excel in. So you can be gunslingers where you get bonuses when you're fast drawing handguns. You can be use knives and blades as a knife fighter, which is what I did. You can work with ranged getting bonuses with bows and crossbows. And then Sniper is a uh, long range shot, so you get a bonus on. Uh, also, you get um, an ability called Combat Nerve. It gives you a bonus when you're trying to avoid suppressive fire or act while you're under fire. Um, the last class is the Scavenger, who is exactly like they sound. They are the ones that are going out and finding the bits and the bobs that you guys are going to be using. His saving throw is health. So he's trying to survive. That leads into that medium armor once again. And then he gets, uh, gets to choose an ability, um, either being good at foraging, being able to sense radiation, and uh, as well as irradiated threats, or Relic Hunter, which uh, allows them to find objects of importance. The last thing that he'll get is a Deal Breaker where he's, uh, he gets a benefit in bartering, gaining advantage when he's attempting to get a better deal uh, when he's buying or selling. So I think that I'm once again going to go Merc. I think I'm once again going to go with uh, Knife Fighter for that up close and personal, but I'm not going to be focused on stealth. This time I'm going to go Strength, and uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, when we get to weapons, I'm going to basically pick the biggest thing that, that I can find. Um, Stat-wise, I have that 18. That's getting dumped into the strength. The next roll was a 15. That's going to be my health. Let's make, uh, first of all, I get that plus one to health because I'm a settler. I'm going to use that there, get the best bang for the buck that I can. 14 is dex and charisma. Bit scarier, bit, bit more sociable uh, or, or skilled in that social situations. Um, and then 13 for the ego and the intelligence. Sorry, instinct and intelligence. Awesome. For me, 
I think I'm probably going to go with mechanic again, uh, like I did in the actual play. I'm going to make a little bit of a different mechanic, similar to you making a different Merc. Um, I'm going to, my name is Jojo, and I have 11 strength, 14 dex, 16 health, 14 int, 12 instinct, and 13 social. So, we've got... For that. skills, in addition to that survival and stealth, I'm looking at taking the athletics and intimidate. Like I said, let's use that strength, because strength is going to be uh, the stat for intimidation, just like it is for athletics. I might not be uh, tucking and rolling as well as somebody else, but I can I can climb, I can swim, I can jump. Awesome. Well, for me, I think I am going to be taking um, vehicle and survival for this engineer. That I'm going to not so much be making a lot of other things, but be you know in the motor pool and uh, be able to survive. Well, you get survival as a settler. Oh, I do get a survival as a settler. Thank you for reminding me. I, I find this interesting because uh, all three classes, I think, yeah, they all three of them have survival naturally. And since our background is forced to be settler, unless you come up with your own in the quick start, uh, it's a, it's a non-pick across the board. I true, think that was kind of interesting. Well, then I'm going to go with engineering and barter. Still doing something a little bit different than what I was doing in the actual play. But, yeah, engineering and barter as my two that I'm selecting. And what what type of uh, fixer were you? I am going to be choosing... Um, I, I am going to be primarily a, you know, general gadgetry person, I think. So, armor, weaponsmith, vehicles, or settlement? I'm going to choose with weaponsmith. Okay. Thank you for... So, um, tools, so I'm going to write in that I'm a weaponsmith right here in my abilities. So, features and traits. So, I'm going to go with weaponsmith. What weaponsmith gives me is when I'm building a weapon or repairing a weapon and such like that, I get a plus two to try and scrap it together. Okay, so the next section, at least as I'm scrolling through the book, let me jump back, choose an origin, choose a class, yep, roll for a biohack. So biohacks are an optional thing that you can take. They're going to be the mutations that some of these post-apocalyptic games uh, deal with. They're going to be, um, from what, what I got when we were talking about them, they're a little less involved than some of the other games. Um, but they, they will represent some of those uh, abilities that if you're picking races in Dungeons and Dragons, you might get, like Dark Vision. Um, Alice, did you want to roll for biohacks, or do you just want to move past that at the moment? Let's go for it. Might as well. Okay. Do you have the page pulled up? So because Yeah, I, I do. That's a 2d6 roll. Sure. Um, if you can roll a 12, you get wings. Ooh, that'd be cool. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Not, not 12. I got a 4. You got a four. You have thick skin. Um, so unnaturally tough skin, making it hard for weapons and ammo to pierce your flesh. Flesh, plus one hit point per level. Nice. Me, I can breathe underwater, which goes really well with that athletics and strength focus. So uh, maybe I need a like a spear so that way I can, uh, you know, kill people underwater. Come in, grapple them, pull them down into the water, and then uh, jab them out. Because I have fish gills. So, step five is something Brandon and I have already done partially. We put our stats into place, and we have our modifiers. Part of this, though, is going to be for us to figure out our hit points. So, for my class, I believe I'm a D10 hit point die. Hit die. Yeah, so I am a 1D10 per mechanic level. So at first level, I start with 10 plus health modifier. Plus, I got tough skin. So I'm going to start with 10 plus 3 plus 1. That's 14. My health starts at a 14. And then on Ooh. these character sheets, you have a max on the little lower left-hand side of the hit point section and a uh, hit die on the lower right. And then the big area up, up above is where you're supposed to do your math. So I'm going to put mine right where they want me to, which is 14. And I'm going to have to shift this down into that little box. Beautiful. And my hit die right now, I'm only going to be first level is what we're making. So that's 1d10. 
Uh, as the Merc, I get that beautiful D12, the mm. uh, the unloved die of most role-playing games. Um, so I've got a 16 in my health. So that brings me up to 15 hit points, just a slight edge above you because of that thick, gnarly skin that you've got. I'm kind of jealous. Oh, yeah, because, you know, that, that, that thick skin, the way it's going to look, is really going to be... Oh, my fish my gills are, uh, are very attractive. Oh, I bet, I bet. Okay, so let's go back to that creation guideline. We did our extrapolated stats. So now we deal with our saving throws. So your class will indicate your saving throw proficiencies, and these are added to your attribute modifiers to give you saving throw total. When asked to make saving throws, you roll the d20 and add the modifier associated with it. So for me, as a mechanic, let's go find what my... My proficiency is, I believe dexterity. It, said, uh, it was dex. There it is. Yes. Saving throw dexterity. And I have it highlighted for people to see. Let me get that on screen for you. Um, so, yeah, mine is dexterity. What is yours, Brandon? Strength. Mm. So I've got that four strength modifier naturally. I'm going to get that plus two proficiency bonus. So I get a plus six on my strength saving throws. So uh, you can't hold me down. Nice. Hopefully. Nice. Hopefully. Awesome. Well, mine, I've done the little marker on. I can fill in the text a little bit. And let's go back up to this. So um, I will be adding two to my saving throws. And now number, or let's see. And, you know, I'll be adding uh, I'll be adding two to that saving throw correction. Sorry, in case anybody caught that, um, caught my slip up. So for number seven, we're going to worry about gear. And for gear... So... Oh, go ahead. No, please, Brandon, cover gear for us. Uh, you are going to... I'm just, I was just writing that down literally. You're going to get your choice of a melee weapon. You get a medium armor of your choice. You get your pack your tools, and one roll on the scrap table. So you actually don't show up with a ranged weapon. Mm. Which is a little different than the way that we, we played it the other day. Yeah, I did. I definitely noticed that because the other day I was given a ranged weapon to start with, which was very helpful. But the GM, oh, did, yes. the GM did say that, you know, it could have been something I hacked together myself since I was uh, an engineer and all. So... Um, wonderful. And I'm going to not worry about, you know, filling in the minutia of the gear for you guys. You guys heard that. But what I am going to do now is scroll through to show you guys that table that Brandon was just mentioning, that scrap table. Let me find that in the quick start. There it is. So you roll a, uh, a D100. And so Brandon, why don't you roll me a D100 and I'll figure out what you got. So I was looking at that the other day, and I didn't see a uh, double lot on it. I did I did not either. I noticed that I didn't myself. know if there was a rule for it or not. 12 is my scrap. You got 12, so you got a pack of cards. And these, like I said, we're playing in a post-apocalyptic setting. And so, you know, these are little relics from the previous age. And for those of you who may have played Numenera or Cypher, it's got a little bit of a, you know, that kind of feeling to it. You may or may not know what use, what item you got was. And you might just have to figure out a way to use it as you go. Some items are a little more obvious than others. I got an old hard drive in the actual play that I never got to use. Uh, for me, on this character, I would have a 48. 48 means I have an empty ammo clip. Hmm, I think I can use an empty ammo clip. That'll let me, I can do stuff with that. Maybe we can store my cards in it. No, we should, I should make ammo because I'm a weaponsmith. I should go make ammo and stuff it in there. I am a weaponsmith. I, 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 I think we should protect the cards. We should apparently protect cards. Got it. Uh, how about I make you something to protect the cards uh, separately? You know, I'll, I'll tinker something up for you. Sound good? Mm, sure, as long as it protects the cards. Okay. So, after that, all you have to do is work on your personal details, figure out your name, figure out the age, figure out your background, what you look like, all the little things that make your character pop and yourself. Uh, you can, again, watch our actual play to see what characters we actually ended up playing and uh, the descriptions of them. 
I'm I'm definitely going with a, a sword. Um, it is uh, a D8 slashing if I use it one handed, but it goes up to a D10 if you I use it two handed, and that's the the biggest damage that I can get out of those melee weapons. Since I'm looking at being a, a, a big and burly, as uh, that seems the best for me. Um, I figured I'd go for a rifle. Um, last time I think I had a pistol or something, mm -hmm. uh, but a scrap rifle for my ranged weapon, which similarly does a D10, um, and it's got a range of 40 to 80, so the, even a rifle, I mean, that's almost charge range in, you know, at the extent of long range. Bows shoot further than, uh, than guns do. Guns have, do more damage on crits, though, uh, than, than a lot of the, the other weapons, so they... The rifle has a times three crit, and the scrap boom, which is basically a scrap together shotgun, has a times four on a critical. Um, so they they do pretty good damage uh, if you can get those crits on them. And um, then I've got my backpack, I've got my pack of cards, and for armor, um, it gives me in the the guide it gives me my choice of any. But I was told by the GM uh, by the writer uh, that the the heavy armors are pretty going to be pretty rare, that being a battle suit or metal plates. So he advised me to go ahead and take it off the medium chart, and I'm, I went with that as well. I went with padded armor, which is going to be uh, 14 plus my deck, so I'm walking around with an AC of 16. And for me, I am going to be taking a, uh, a sword, uh, which is going to be a D8 slashing, and... Something Brandon didn't cover is that there is something called break in this game, the system. What that's going to mean is when you roll crit fumbles or somebody crits you, and there are certain other situations where the GM may decide your item breaks, you'll take a wear. It's kind of like durability on the gear. And if you have a mechanic or you have certain types of characters, they will be able to repair it for you. But otherwise, it will keep breaking, and at, one po at some point, it will no longer be usable. You will take negatives as they get more broken. For me, on armor, I am going to be taking a Kevlar armor. So what's the point on the Kevlar? Because I really didn't understand what the benefit of it was over padded. So... Um, you know, that's a good question. I don't see one because it's heavier. It's found and it's rare, but yeah, I think I'll just take padded. I just took, I just remembered Kevlar from the previous, so I just scrolled to the armor just now, and you're correct, padded is better. So I will also take padded armor, and that um, is 14 plus my uh, dex, so that's going to give me an AC of 16. So are you, uh, are you comfortable mixing it up in melee over there? Yeah, I think so. Then I'll keep my scrap rifle to myself. You know, it's uh, it's not my preferred. Well, my physical, my strength is going to suck. So if you let me borrow your scrap rifle, I'm going to be a lot more effective. Well, um, if your strength sucks but your dex is good, the daggers definitely are recommended. With finesse, you can use your uh, dex to hit and damage. They both have to, you know, if you use it for two hit, you have to use it for damage. That's I'm not true. certain why you'd choose not to. Yeah. But um, they work really well on that. I guess that's true. I just was trying to uh, utilize that versatility because uh, daggers aren't versatile. But... Yeah, if you're going to two-hand a sword. Yeah. So that... But that's true. I might look at doing a dagger instead. That sounds good. I'll do dagger. So I'll pick up, the, pick up a dagger instead of a sword. And that can even let me throw it on close range. Sounds great. I'll have a little bandolier of daggers maybe someday. Well, so yeah, I'm I'm thinking of uh, my guy uh, is Hith, and uh, Hith is a uh, you know big burly guy. He got a uh, mohawk that's you know put together with the with animal grease and such animal fat that uh, is rendered down uh, to put in your hair. Probably dyed a a fairly bright color and just you know. Big, burly, and designed to be intimidating. A, a, a modern-day post-apocalyptic gladiator, effectively, that is looking at going out and uh, winning winning accolades. Cool. I was thinking of someone a little bit younger for this character, um, a bit like uh, the, the ship's engineer from uh, Firefly kind of age. 
I forget her name right now. Kaylee. Thank you. And I was looking at having basic, I was wearing the light padded armor or medium pad, padded armor, uh, goggles on my head uh, that are kind of makeshift, you know, just to protect me from the the soldering iron and such like that. Uh, I, I'm rather much lighter on carrying tools than my than Ratch was. I'm probably Ratch's apprentice in some ways. And if we're from the same settlement, I'm looking at like having long curly hair always bundled up in a top knot kind of bun that's like frizzy puff of uh, curls and carrying around a wrench all the time. So yeah. It's a quick there we go. If you want to make your wrench your weapon, you could just take uh, the club. Yeah, maybe. That's true. But we... then you don't get to use your decks instead. Yep, exactly. Well, simple, quick, and easy. That's Ruin RPG for D&D 5th Edition Adaptation. They are also looking at putting out a D100-based system separately, so stay tuned for possibly more info on that. That's character creation, everyone. Hope you enjoyed watching, and see you guys next time. Bye.